Hello and welcome to this Dr. Frost Maths video on Key Stage 5 Basic Trigonometric Identities. Now we're going to be exploring and improving two key trigonometric identities in this video. There are other trigonometric identities as well involving things like cosec and sec and cot, but we'll explore those in a different video and just cover the two most basic ones here. Now imagine that I was to have a right angled triangle like this, and let's just say that I made this angle here x and I was to make the hypotenuse of the triangle 1. Now let's use basic trigonometry to work out what this length is here and what this length is here. So let's make this A and let's make this B. If we label the sides, we know that this is the hypotenuse, this is the opposite, and this is the adjacent. So using basic trigonometry, we know that sine of x is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse, so B over 1 which is just b, and we know that cos of x is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, so a over 1, which is just a, and we also know that tan of x is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is b over a. So now we know what a and b are, let's just redraw this, but putting in those side lengths that we have. So we know that b is sine of x, so let's label this side as sine of x. A, we worked out was cos of x, so we can put cos of x here. And we can now prove these two identities here. Now note that tan of x was b over a. So we can see that tan of x is equal to b, which is the sine of x, over the a, which is cos of x. So that gives us our first trigonometric identity, and really we should put a sort of triple equal symbol here. That's an identity, and that means this is true for every value of x. So for example, tan of 30 will be equal to sine of 30 over cos of 30, and so on. And this other identity we can just prove by using Pythagoras. So by Pythagoras theorem, if we do this side squared, so sine of x all squared plus this other shorter side squared, so cos of x squared, then we know that's equal to the hypotenuse squared, so equal to 1 squared. Now if we just simplify these, when we have sine of x all squared, there's a notational convenience for this. We can write it as sine squared of x, and that just means sine of x all squared. It doesn't mean the sine is being squared, that doesn't make any sense. It means that the sine of x is being squared. And similarly, this is going to be cos squared of x, and we can do this as a triple equals because this will always be equal to 1 regardless of what x is, and 1 squared is equal to 1, and that proves that second identity here. Now we're going to use these identities when we do trigonometric proofs and also when we solve trigonometric equations as well, which we'll see in other videos.